Today on Ramblings with Rebecca, post-colonialism. Uh, this is another request from a viewer, so I hope this is helpful. And again, good luck with midterms. Post-colonialism, uh, or post-colonial studies, is less of a theory, actually, and more of an actual academic discipline. Um, it's often lumped in with a lot of things like post-modernism and post-constructualism. Uh, that's actually more a facet of when it emerged uh, as a th as an academic discipline and a thought process rather necessarily than exactly what it argues or what it looks at. That being said, oftentimes intellectuals who are interested in studying post-colonialism and things like power, politics, exploitation on the international arena are perhaps, but not necessarily, more likely to be further along the spectrum towards you know, kind of the constructivist epistemologies, you know, truth is relative, that kind of thing. Um, so, so there is a connection and there is some overlap, but they're not, you know, hand in hand, best bosom buddies, you know, can't be separated kind of things. So with that, uh, post-colonial studyism. That was not a phrase. I'm really sorry. Post-colonial studies or post-colonialism, blending my words here. Um, is looking at a way to analyze, uh, understand, respond to um, the cultural, political, economic legacies of colonialism and imperialism. Um, it's trying to get a hold of and somehow be able to deal with, um, you know, this history and legacy of exploitation, um, of what happens to people and societies and individuals, you know, kind of the human consequences of, you know, a country, a regime or whatever coming in from externally controlling an area, bringing in settlers. Um, so n aliens essentially to come in explicitly, explicitly with the purpose of exploiting economically, but also in other ways, people, resources, land. Um, so this does draw from postmodern schools of thought um, to consider things like the creation of knowledge and the politics of control of knowledge and information, um, and then also to look at the the systems of a society. Um, so considering social and political power, um, what uh, what allowed certain countries, groups of people, etc., to colonize others. Um, how do those power relations continue to exist and persist in the world today? Lots of Marxism thing, Marxism stuff here. Um, Post-colonial ideas and concerns can easily be found in international relations, but also in sociology, anthropology, human geography, religious studies, feminism, linguistics, yada, yada, yada. I mean, it really kind of blends all over the place. Um, and can even get into science when you're looking at you know, ethics of science, but also questions about the production of knowledge and authoritative knowledge and, you know, who gets to claim what about the world and why. Um, going perhaps most helpfully or most concretely, I can hope, for the international relations exam people that we've got, uh, there's this idea of core and periphery. This borrows from uh, Marxist and neo-Marxist thought. Um, so there are some countries that are in the core. Uh, this is the power all right, so this would be Britain during the age of colonialism, the United States, perhaps China today, you know, kind of the big players who get to control the agenda, um, who, you know, drive forward what is and is not international law, who are, you know, have all the economic and military prowess, that kind of stuff. And then you have the periphery. Um, so countries, groups of people, individuals, whatever, who who are outside, essentially, the game, right, who don't have power, um, who can't drive forward their own agenda, um, who may be completely subject to explicitly the core. Um, so during colonialism, you know, Britain is the core, all of its colonies, you know, like literally do whatever the core tells them to. In today's modern relations, international relations, these are more subtle um, and less overt and more, you know, kind of just implicit, right? The, the, the U.S. gets to boss around countries, right? But this is because it has a lot of kind of soft power or everyone knows it could beat it up, rather than because the U.S. is actively occupying the territory or whatever. 
And then there's this idea of the semi-periphery, right? So, like, the, the kind of little guys who are maybe friends with the big guys or whatever, right? So we have these different groups of states. But the, that idea of core periphery, power, powerless, et cetera, et cetera, can be brought into individuals and groups. So there's a wee, wee bit on postcolonialism. And again, good luck with those exams.